Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a horror film called, Drag Me to Hell. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In 1969 Pasadena, a young distraught couple brings in their son to a medium named Sean Sandina. The boy has been hearing voices for three days thinking someone is after him. It turns out he stole a silver necklace from a gypsy wagon, but even returning the necklace didn't stop the voices. Sandina takes the boy into her house and begins to perform a ritual to save him, but it's too late. The shadows have come to take the boy. Suddenly, an unseen force pushes the adults away. Feeling terrified, the boy runs away and trips over to the balcony. Sandina runs after him and sees the boy, unmoving on the tiled floor. As the parents run over to their son, a crack opens up on the floor, and burned arms drag the boy to the depths of hell. The crack disappears and so does the boy. Sandina makes a vow to meet with the devil again and redeem herself. At present time Pasadena, Christine Brown is working at a bank as a loan officer. Gearing up for a big promotion, Christine has her heart set on becoming assistant manager. She's determined to impress her boss, Mr. Jim Jacks, and beat her rival, Stu Rubin. Unfortunately, Mr. Jacks doesn't think she can handle tough decisions and isn't taking her seriously. He sends her on an early lunch break and asks her to bring two sandwiches for him and Stu. Feeling dejected, Christine visits her boyfriend, Clay Dalton, who's a psychology professor at a nearby university. After having lunch together, Christine gives him a rare coin to add to his coin collection. She kisses him goodbye as his phone rings. As she's walking away, she hears Clay's mother on the phone with him. Clay comes from a rich and upper-class family and Mrs. Dalton doesn't like the idea of his son dating some unknown farm girl. She walks away and arrives at work feeling more down than ever. Stu is still on his way sucking up to the boss. She needs to learn how to handle tough decisions if she wants this promotion to impress the Daltons. Her chance comes in the form of a peculiar-looking old lady with a glass eye named Mrs. Sylvia Ganush. The bank is repossessing Mrs. Ganush's house because she's unable to pay her mortgage. She's come for an extension for her mortgage but it turns out she's already been given an extension by the bank twice. Wanting to stand her ground and show her boss that she can handle tough decisions, Christine flatly rejects Mrs. Ganush's appeal and tells her that there's nothing she can do about it. Mrs. Ganush rises from her chair and begs Christine on her knees to get her house back. Christine backs away, feeling weirded out by the situation, and calls security. The old lady drops down on the floor and looks at Christine, feeling completely humiliated. Mrs. Ganush lunges at her but security grabs her and forces her out. Christine feels shaken by the incident but Mr. Jax is impressed that she was able to stand her ground. As a reward, he lets her handle an important client for the bank and reassures her about the promotion. Later that night after work, Christine walks into the dark parking lot alone. She sees a lone car sitting across from hers that looked like Mrs. Ganesh's own car. The paranoia is creeping in now as she hurries to her vehicle. She turns her head, thinking she's heard a sound and jams her keys into the door. She hurries inside and spots a handkerchief floating in the air towards her. It slams into her car window and she screams. As Christine turns to face her backseat, Mrs. Ganesh appears and grabs her head. Christine screams as she tries to break free and grabs the stapler from her box. She slams the stapler into the woman's face multiple times before her feet step on the gas. The car runs backward and re rends another car, forcing the woman to loosen her grip. She wraps her arms around Christine's neck, strangling her, as Christine shifts the gear forward and steps on the gas one more time. She pulls down her seat belt and crashes directly into another parked car, tossing Mrs. Ganesh forward and knock the dentures out of her mouth. The old woman tries to bite her with her slimy toothless gums but Christine pushes her back and stabs a ruler into her mouth. She kicks the lady out of the car and locks the door. Mrs. Ganesh grabs a brick and drags her out of the car. As Christine prepares for another attack, the old woman reaches out to her coat and grabs one of her coat buttons. She smiles in delight as she whispers into the button and calls on Lamia. Mrs. Ganesh returns the button to Christine and tells her that she will soon come begging her. Christine passes out and when wakes up, Mrs. Ganesh is gone. She calls the police and her boyfriend. Clay rescues Christine from the scene. As they walk to his car, Christine gets the urge to have her fortune read. Clay is skeptical but joins her anyway. They meet the seer, a man named Ram Jass. In a small dark room, Ram Jass begins to read Christine's fortune. He feels that something's been taken from her, specifically a coat button. As he sees into Christine's future, wind enters the room and breaks one of his framed pictures. He then sees the mark of the devil upon her. Ram Jass backs away and tells her that someone must have cursed her. He tries to give them back their money, hands them his business card, and sends them away. Clay drives them home, still skeptical about the session, and tells Christine that he'll be back in an hour, leaving her alone in the house with their cat. Christine tries to relax after the day's unsettling events, but it's too late. The curse is slowly beginning to take place. After baking a cake, she puts away her things and sees an old picture of her. She crumples the picture, wanting to leave her farm girl past behind her. Just then, she hears a sound coming from the door and sees the gate wide open. A strong gust of wind makes her gasp as it roams all around the house and turns off the power. She runs into the kitchen and closes the window. The wind stops and the house falls into silence. She grabs a flashlight and watches as the shadows on the wall form into a horned figure. She's tossed back into the cabinets and falls to the floor with a busted lip just as the power comes back on. Clay arrives and calls a doctor to check on her. He reassures her that it's just post-traumatic stress and things will get better. He suggests going on a weekend trip to his parents' cabin and this cheers her up. 
They settle in for the night and as Christine sleeps, a fly enters the room and creeps around her face. It enters her mouth and she wakes up coughing. When she settles back into bed, she screams as she sees the decaying corpse of Mrs. Ganesh beside her. The corpse pins her down to the bed and vomits maggots all over her face. Christine sits right up on the bed and feels relieved that it was just a nightmare. Clay drives her over to work and she enters the bank, still feeling stressed over what happened yesterday. She doesn't know why, but she feels as if the universe has shifted. She feels paranoid and sees traces of Mrs. Ganesh everywhere she looks. She gets impatient with Stu and shouts at him. Suddenly, her phone rings and she answers it but blood starts dripping from her nose. Mr. Jax approaches her to ask what's wrong, but she starts projectile vomiting blood onto her boss. Feeling horrified, she grabs her things and runs out. Unbeknownst to her, Stu steals her client documents from her desk. Christine makes her way to the house of Mrs. Ganesh's granddaughter, Alenka. She begs Alenka to let her in and apologize to her grandmother so that she can help and make things right. Alenka scoffs at her but leads her into the basement. Christine makes her down and finds herself in a bizarre ceremony. People were eating, talking, and drinking as she looks for Mrs. Ganesh. Suddenly, she trips into something and lands on the floor with Mrs. Ganesh's corpse on top of her. It turns out Mrs. Ganesh is dead and this is her funeral. The relatives help carry the corpse off her as Christine stands up to regain her composure. Alenka arrives at her side and tells her that she deserves everything that's coming for her. Christine shudders as she looks at the corpse that is now staring at her. Even in death, Mrs. Ganesh wouldn't let her go. Christine decides to see Ram Jass and learns that she's being hunted by a Lamia. The Lamia is the black goat which gypsies summon to do their evil deeds. The Lamia torments its victim for three days before revealing itself and taking the accursed object and the soul of its owner. The accursed object is something taken from the victim, is cursed, and then given back. Christine gasps as she realizes that her accursed object is her coat button. Ram Jass advises her that if she wants the Lamia off her back, she can try appeasing it by sacrificing an animal and then hands her a book that shows her how to do it. Christine returns back home and feels haunted by Lamia. She hears a sound coming from the house and sees the shadow of the devil outside her house. She runs upstairs and sees the shadow walking up the stairs. She backs away and locks herself in the bedroom and tries to call her boyfriend. A picture of Mrs. Ganesh appears on her phone and she tosses it away. The Lamia is now outside her door, its hands reaching out to take her soul to hell. Christine runs to the window but Lamia appears and bursts its way in. The window breaks as she's lifted into the air in a circle. Her things float around her as she's rung about like a lifeless doll before being thrown back to the floor. She looks around the messy room and feels determined about her decision. She goes back to the kitchen, grabs a knife, and sacrifices their cat. After she buries the corpse of their pet in the backyard, Clay arrives and tries to postpone their dinner with his parents but Christine insists that she wants to go. They arrive at Dalton's villa and are received coldly by Mr. and Mrs. Dalton. Mr. Dalton is tolerable of their relationship, but Mrs. Dalton is a downright snob and doesn't miss a chance to make Christine feel unwelcome. During dinner, Mrs. Dalton interrogates Christine and gets her to admit the troubled past she had while living on a farm. For once, Mrs. Dalton is impressed by Christine's honesty. The atmosphere turns light as they all laugh together, but Christine feels nothing but dread as she hears a distant sound. She pokes her cake and finds an eyeball in it. She stabs it with a knife and blood oozes out. Suddenly, she hears a loud ringing in her head. She tries to keep her composure but is soon sent into a coughing fit. She spits out a fly from her mouth and it horrifies Mrs. Dalton. Christine hears the loud ringing noise again, but this time paired with thunderous knocks. She's fed up with everything and throws a glass at the door, screaming for Lamia to leave her alone. Mr. and Mrs. Dalton is taken aback as Christine leaves. Christine visits Ram Jass again and is angry at him for making her sacrifice their cat for nothing. He reminds her that these are dark and powerful spirits that they're dealing with. He knows someone who can help her, but this person won't be willing to put themselves at risk for free. He tells Christine that she needs $10,000 in cash by tomorrow. The next day, Christine finds herself in Mr. Jack's office and asks him if she can get an advance as the new assistant manager. He informs her that the promotion has been delayed because their biggest client went to another bank for their deal and he's thinking of giving the position to Stu anyway. Christine goes back home, feeling desperate, and strips her house of any loose cash. As she goes into the shed to start selling some of her old stuff, Mrs. Ganesh appears from behind a curtain and pins her to the wall by the neck. Christine struggles as she cuts a rope and sends an anvil straight onto the old woman's head. Her head bursts and blood splatters all over Christine's face, but she wakes up and finds that it's just a hallucination. She sells her stuff at a pawn shop, but she still needs more money. Clay arrives and finds her crying in the kitchen with the money. He tells her that he already paid Ram Jass in full. Even though he's skeptical about the whole thing, he cares about Christine and if this is what it takes for her to be at peace, then he's willing to do it. She thanks him and gives him a hug. They drive up to an old mansion and are received by Ram Jass who introduces them to an older Sean Sandina and her assistant, Milos. Sandina believes what Christine is going through and shares with her the story of a young boy who was also cursed by Lamia. She's waited all these years to finally destroy the beast and tonight, the opportunity has come. Sandina takes them to a grand room with a seance table in the center. In this place, there is a special doorway in the center through which spirits pass through. They take their seats at the table as Milos ties a goat next to Christine. Sandina takes out a machete and tells her that they will force Lamia into the goat and Milos will use the machete to strike the animal dead. They hold hands together as Sandina starts the ritual. 
Suddenly, the chanting stops, and the objects around them start moving around. Christine gasps as she sees a group of spirits walking towards them. Sandina sends the unsettled souls away and feels Lamia coming in. Christine turns around and hears the sound of hoofs as it comes closer. A loud ringing bursts into her head and then stops. Sandina gasps as Lamia takes over her body. Ram Jass talks to Lamia and asks her what she wants. It wants Christine's soul. It lunges for Christine but touches the goat instead. Milos gets up from his chair and drives the machete towards the animal but ends up cutting the rope loose. The goat bites his hand and transfers the Lamia to him. Milos starts dancing above the table as Ram Jass commands him to leave. The spirit throws a chair to the seer, knocking him out. Christine tries to run away but is blocked by Lamia. Lamia, in Milos's body, throws up her cat's corpse, telling her it doesn't want anything but her soul. Ram Jass gains consciousness and helps Sandina to her feet to banish the spirit. Sandina commands Lamia and pulls it away from Christine. She holds it above the table and pulls out the spirit in the form of red smoke from Milos's body. The smoke disappears and Milos collapses on the table, back to his old self. Christine thanks Sandina but she faints to the floor. Ram Jass tries to revive her but it's too late, the ritual has taken an enormous strain on her body and she dies. As Sandina's body is wheeled into the ambulance, Ram Jass tells Christine that it's not over yet. Lamia is still free to roam about and will come for her because the goat was never slaughtered. The only way now is to pass the accursed object to someone else so that Lamia will take them instead of Christine. They place the button into an envelope and he tells Christine that she has until morning to get rid of it. On the way home, Christine lies to Clay and tells him that it's all over. She sees Mrs. Ganesh on the road and they stop, almost running over an old man. Her files are thrown on the floor, including the envelope with the button. She now feels the weight of her decision in her bag. She has to pass this course to someone else or else she'll burn in hell. They arrive at home but Christine tells Clay that she'll meet him at the station for their weekend trip. She panics for a second as she searches her files for the envelope but quickly finds it. Christine goes to a diner and searches for a person to pass the curse. Suddenly, she has an idea. She calls Stu on the phone and blackmails him into coming, threatening to tell Mr. Jax that it was Stu who stole the documents off her desk and led their biggest client to make the deal with their rival bank. Stu arrives in a matter of minutes and begs Christine not to rat him out to their boss. He breaks down crying and she feels sorry for him and changes her mind. She asks him to leave and is now feeling desperate. She visits Ram Jass who tells her that she can give the accursed object to a dead person. Christine grabs a shovel and makes her way to the cemetery. The same handkerchief appears as she drives, taking the shape of Mrs. Ganesh tries to suffocate her. She stops the car and rips the cloth apart. She grabs her shovel and enters the cemetery. She digs up Mrs. Ganesh's corpse, opens up her mouth, and makes a formal declaration, transferring the ownership of the accursed button back to the old woman. The rain starts filling in the hole as Christine desperately tries to get out. The corpse floats around and drags her down to the water as the cross falls down on her head. In a matter of seconds, Christine emerges from the water and uses the cross to pull herself out. She goes back home by morning, feeling happy now that she's finally free from the gypsy's curse. She packs her bags for their trip and Mr. Jax calls her to let her know that she got the promotion after they found out it was Stu who gave out the insider information. Christine drives up to the station to meet up with Clay but decides to buy a new coat, especially for the trip. Meanwhile, Clay is waiting for her with an engagement ring in her pocket. They finally meet and Christine thanks him for fully supporting her throughout the whole thing. He asks her about her old coat but she tells him that she threw it away. Just then, Clay pulls out an envelope containing the cursed button. It turned out that Christine took the wrong envelope and gave Mrs. Ganesh the rare coin that she meant to give to Clay. Christine gasps as she backs away and falls into the train tracks. He runs towards her to help her but it's too late. The train speeds over as a hole erupts from beneath Christine as burned hands pull her down to the depths of hell. Clay can only stand and watch in disbelief as the new owner of the cursed button. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.